Good morning everybody, Silas here today and we have got a lot of exciting and cool stuff going on. First things first, I'm here at the local swap meet. It's today and tomorrow and I used to come to this all the time and this is where I made most of my money. Not setting up here, but I would come here and buy stuff from people that did set up here they had their stuff really cheap, and then I would take it home, organize it, and resell it on eBay. I used to make about you know five to ten thousand dollars a year doing that because the swap meet used to be twice a year. But uh, I don't do eBay anymore, hardly at all. So I'm not here today looking for good deals or things to flip and that sort of stuff. I'm here looking for cool stuff, things I can use for myself. And you know what? If I see a really really good deal, I'm probably going to grab it. Last year, I found a set of bumper guards. And I had no clue what they were for, and I think they were twenty bucks. 30 bucks, 40, I don't, I don't remember exactly what they were now, it's been too long, but they're for a 1954 Mercury, extremely rare option from back in the day, uh, add-on option, and they're worth tons of money over what I paid, anywhere from $800 to $1,500, I've had a lot of different estimates on them, but still, even at $800, that's a huge profit, so if I see a deal like that, I'm grabbing it, but other than that, let's go see if we can find some cool stuff. It's a windy one and it's supposed to be pretty cold this weekend out of nowhere, so there's not a whole lot of people here surprisingly. Usually this whole field's full, but we'll see if, what we can find. Found a few goodies already. Got an old Mercury steering wheel. Ten bucks, I couldn't turn that down. Make good wall art. Got an old 54 Chevy grill and a whole bunch of extra teeth for a hundred bucks. Bunch of carburetors, these are five and ten bucks a piece. There's an old Holly with glass bowl car Holly carburetor in here. This is for a 64 to 66 Chevy, old Ford. And I really don't know what that goes to, but I went ahead and bought it anyway. So let's see what else we can find. How much on these truck cages right here? Um, both of them or just that one? Probably just this one. I don't know. Yeah, probably just that one. I didn't see a price on them anywhere. Sure, I'll do that. Why not? Huh. Really interesting. Yeah. Huh. I wish this one wasn't so scratched up. Would you take the lens itself? Yeah, you can trade that lenses if you want. Okay, I'll take that lens and that handle. Man, I'm already buying way too much stuff. I need to stop all in the head, but I've barely even started. I don't know where this guy's at. He's a pretty cool guy. I always used to buy a lot of stuff from him. Back when I was doing eBay, I'd buy all of his carburetors and magnetos. He's usually pretty fair on them, but I better not. I bought some really cool stuff from him through the years. Check out this old muffler. Check this thing out. Take 60 bucks? If you're a good buyer, I'll take it. We'll do that. Check out this funky homemade light of some sort. They had some serious ingenuity when they made this thing, just whatever they could find laying around. For five bucks, I couldn't pass it up. Let's go inside and see what we can find in there. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's mine now. Junk card memorabilia, $35, why not? Hmm, bags of engines. It's kind of neat. I have no clue why, but I'm gonna buy these two bags of engines. They did, I walked by and saw them and I, I thought I had to have them, they spoke to me. <laughs> huh, that's unusual. Yeah, that's pretty cool right there. Picked me up a whole bunch of chrome headlight rings. That way I've got plenty for my wall art type stuff. Alright, now I'm going to go around and gather up all the stuff I bought. I know a lot of people here, so I just kind of stash stuff here and there at different booths. That way I wouldn't have to carry it the whole time. And now I'm going to go gather it all up and see how much stuff I bought that I shouldn't have bought. Alright, I am done at the swap meet. I am back here at the yard now. I was going to go swap trucks, but I've actually got a guy here to pick up that Mustang race car. So I just came straight over here. It is super windy out there right now, so I'm going to wait to show you guys what all I bought until later. Uh, hopefully it'll die down a little bit, or I'll take my truck out to my place and unload everything, and I'll go through it then. But for right now, I'm going to get that Mustang loaded up on him, and show him around a little bit, and then after that, I've got to crush a load of cars. I actually have a flatbed for going out east coming next week, so 
I gotta work on crushing some cars today. And then I may have a guy coming to look at some antique cars later today. If not, for sure tomorrow I've got a bunch of that going on. So I guess you can ride along with me and we'll see what we can get done. Had a few cars get dumped off over the evening. One of the tow companies has a key to our yard. I dumped some junk off it looks like. Who talk about a rat nest. Look at that. Man, this is somebody's house, that's for sure, for a long time. That's nasty. There ain't nothing coming off of this truck. It's going straight in the crusher. If you watched my previous video, you saw those steps that I got. Here's a whole bunch more of them. I think there's one, two, three, four, five sets of them here. These are pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but they've got to be a use for those. They're super nice. I can't sell them. I have to either scrap them or keep them. That's part of the deal of getting the stuff out there. They're here to get that Mustang now. He's down there filming. He's trying to get a YouTube channel going. I don't know if he's posted it yet or not, if he's actually gone live with his channel, but if he has, I'll be sure to tell you about that here in a minute. We've got all the parts to make this thing a race car again. There we go, got it grabbed up. I'm gonna load it on his trailer. He hasn't got his channel going. I was talking to him. He keeps recording stuff and not liking the way it sounds and so he doesn't post it. I told him, I said, man, it doesn't matter if it's garbage, just start posting stuff. That's what I did. That's what you gotta do sometimes. You, you gotta put the garbage out there just to get your name out there and then you can do the better stuff later. Oktoberfest. All right, it's died down a little bit. It's still pretty windy, but I'm gonna show you what all I got. I guess we'll just start up here with the small stuff, but I got two bags clear full of old engines model car engines now, there's even a few six cylinders in here it's mostly v8s but there's even a few six cylinders there's one there's a six cylinder you don't see the six cylinder stuff too often in the model cars it's always the big v8s with the double carburetors and stuff like that because that's what looks coolest there's that back there see like that engine there has a big blower on it bunches of neat stuff what did I pay for these? I think, yeah, I gave 10 bucks a bag. I figured that's a pretty good price. And then I got a bunch of bags of just miscellaneous pieces of models. I thought they were pretty neat. He had bag after bag after bag, probably 100 bags of model parts. And I just got the ones I thought were the neatest. Got a bunch of old touring body stuff in here. And there's a bunch of old cabs in this one. So I bought most of these to resell. There's a few of them I'm gonna keep for myself. Then the rest of it I'm just gonna sell. I figure there's a little bit of need to be made there. And I was walking around and I happened to see this in the guy's stuff. This is a 1967 Thunderbird. This is an Aura is the brand. It's a metal base with a plastic body. And I have one or two of these already, but I've never found one in the wild like that, quote unquote, in the wild. Usually I have to buy them online. But to actually see one in person at a swap meet was pretty unusual and pretty cool. Kind of a hard piece to find. And it's in pretty good shape, a little bit of damage, but I think I gave 12 bucks for that, but that's going to my personal collection. These aren't super old, but you guys know I love my Dodge trucks. So I bought a couple crew cabs, and there's a Chevy there. That was just neat, and it was cheap, and it was there, so I grabbed it. But yeah, there's another crew cab. What else we get in here? There's just a regular one there. I can get in here. And another crew cab. And yeah, one more. Another regular truck there. So I thought those were pretty neat. And they were about the same price as what you would pay at the store. None of these are that old. All of these are probably within the last three years or so. So, but they're just neat. And they're ones that I like, so I'll keep them. Now we'll get into the other stuff that I got. All sorts of stuff. Now those converters, I did not get there. I just bought those a minute ago and I threw them in my truck real quick. And then these two gauges, I did not get there. I sold those on eBay. I've got to take those home and get those packaged tonight. But I bought a ton of stuff. I don't even know where to start in here. I guess we'll start over here. You guys saw me buy some of this stuff, but some of the stuff I didn't record. A lot of it, if I can hop up in here, people were playing music and I don't want to get copyright claimed, so I couldn't record. But I got the old Chevy truck gauges. I think I gave 40 bucks for those. Uh, this old carburetor here, I don't know what it is, but I gave 10 bucks for it. Uh, this grill here was probably the best buy of the whole sale. I gave 100 bucks for the grill and that bag has, I think, eight more teeth in it, plus a set of door handles. So I thought that was a pretty good deal for a 54 Chevy car. What else we get? Oh, this old muffler. Check this thing out. I showed you guys this out there, but I went ahead and bought it. It was 10 bucks for a brand new antique muffler. I just couldn't pass that up. This here, I think I gave 60 bucks for this. Online, it'll probably sell for about double that. Got the old brass nozzle there. I paid basically scrap brass price for that. 
And all these carburetors and stuff came from, you know, I went by that guy's booth and I said, hey, this guy's got some pretty cool stuff here usually, but he's not here right now. Well, I came back and he was there. And so I went ahead and I bought all of his carburetors. I didn't want to, I didn't plan on it, but he usually brings this sort of stuff just for me. And he gave me a super, super, super good deal on all the magnetos and carburetors. So I couldn't pass them up. If I can sell four or five of these, I'll get double my money back and then the rest of them don't matter anymore. Then I got this box up here. I think I gave 10 bucks for that carburetor. That's for a 64 to 66 Impala. And then this old Ford flathead carburetor, I gave five bucks for it. There's a glass bowl, Holly in there. And just odds and ends stuff there. This box here has a bunch of, I think these are for a 66 Chevy truck. A couple of them are pretty nice, have original paint. The rest of them aren't so nice, but they weren't too expensive. And he threw in a couple of headlight rings. They're not matching rings, but for my wall art stuff, I'm always needing headlight rings so I can just run a screw through those and make them fit. Let's see what else we got in here. There's some pretty cool magnetos like this old Sims. I've never had one of those before. And here's an old uh, Splitdorf. That's pretty cool. Both of those are probably fairly valuable. Probably fairly rare. They're going to be slow sales. But when they do sell, they're one of those things that you can't find them anywhere else. So people will pay just about whatever you ask for them if they need one. Let's see if I got... Yeah, there's just a bunch of big magnetos. These always sell good here. And yeah, that will sell good. That will sell good. Some of these others like that over there, they sell, but they don't bring a whole lot of money. But I got them dirt cheap, so I guess I can't complain. Got the old Mercury steering wheel. I can't figure out what year this is. If you know what year this Mercury steering wheel is, let me know. He said it was a 50, but I did a quick Google search, and it doesn't look the same. So maybe I just looked up the wrong model. I don't know. But it's got the Mercury head on it. I know it's Mercury. If you know what year that is, let me know in the comments. And then I got a whole pile of headlight rings here. Those came from two different places. I think I gave around five bucks a piece for those. And like I've said before, adding two headlight rings adds at least $100 of value to a nose. So that's a pretty good investment. Spend 10 bucks to make an extra 100. Can't beat that and I'm always needing them. And then there were some of these. I don't know if they're worth any money or not. These old guide magnifying glass thingamajiggers. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I got that one there. And then this one here has a little handle on it still. I couldn't pass them up. I think I gave 20 bucks for the pair. Maybe that was a bad deal. If it was a bad deal, I'll just keep them. If it was a good deal, I'll sell them and make some money. Then I got this old homemade light. I showed you guys that already. Somebody pieced it together using just whatever they had laying around. And that's got to be my favorite piece right there. Is that, that uh, enter at your own risk, bad dog made out of an old refrigerator piece. That's just good junkyard full cart. I really like that. Just kind of going through it real quick. I think I spent about $500 on everything. Counting the model cars and the toy cars and everything I have up in the cab as well. That's not too bad. I spent 500 bucks. I should be able to get at least my money back, if not a little bit more, out of all those 54 Chevy grill pieces. So boom, right there, boom. I have nothing else invested in the rest of this at that point in time. So if I can sell like that old Mercury steering wheel for 100 bucks, and I can sell a few of these magnetos for 50 or 100 bucks, a couple of these carburetors for 50 bucks, uh, a couple of those carburetors then you know really 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 quickly I can add up probably around fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff and then whatever's after that left over that I don't want to mess with selling I can either sell in an auction or I can pitch it in the scrap and I'm okay some of the stuff I'm not gonna sell like I mentioned the Dodge trucks and the Thunderbird I'm not gonna sell I'm not gonna sell the funky homemade light and I'm not gonna sell the the bad dog sign but that's enough of that I've got to get to crushing I've got about three hours left in today and whatever time I have on Monday to crush cars to get the whole load crush. Shouldn't take me that long to get it all done just because I've got some vehicles that are already ready. Man, that wind is blowing hard. There we go, get out of the wind a little bit. It's crazy. Temperatures dropping here really fast and the Northeast is looking at getting record breaking uh, heat wave coming through, so <laughs> kind of crazy. But anyway, I'm over here out of the wind now and I've got this van right here beside me. This is the one that's clear full of iron. It's fairly heavy, it weighs I think almost six tons. So that's a bundle by itself and it's ready to crush. I don't have to do anything to it. And then I've got that old truck that's full of rat turds. Uh, that's pretty well ready. I just got to drain the fluids out of that. So hopefully I can get the load mostly crushed today and then I can finish it up on Monday.
check out under the hood of this truck. This is the truck that had the gigantic rat nest inside it. It's a definite rat nest underneath that hood. Absolutely crazy. So I've got a slight problem. My battery went dead on my impact. It is completely bone dead. And of course, I'm in a different truck yet today and I do not have a charger for the battery. So <laughs> not much I can do until I get home tonight. I'm not gonna go home. It's three o'clock already now. I'm not gonna go home to get a charger. That's gonna take, it's gonna be an hour before I can start pulling lug nuts off and I gotta shut everything down 30 minutes after that. So I'll just wait till Monday. What I'm gonna go ahead and do until then is I'm just gonna process cars and get them ready to go other than the wheels. That way Monday I can come in and just crush like a madman and get them all done. So that's probably gonna be all for today. Like I said, I've got a bunch of old car stuff going on tomorrow. So we will continue this video then. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, I lied. It's not the next day. I'm still here, but I just got something in really cool. So I wanted to show it to you. Check these out. Whole bunch of old kegs. There's some aluminum ones and some stainless ones. Pretty cool stuff right there. I think they're Coors and Bush. I'm not sure if there's any other brands there or not. But a guy had those and he was scrapping them. I thought, man, those are pretty cool. I gotta have those. People make old gas tanks for old rat rods out of these and they do all sorts of cool stuff with these. So I definitely had to hang on to those. I'll find those a new home. I'm not gonna scrap those for sure. And good morning, we are back again. I am headed out to my place. I've already got people sitting there waiting on me and hopefully everybody shows up today. In between people, I plan on unloading all these swap meet goodies. Last night I actually listed those model engines and car parts and that sort of stuff. Uh, my wife was gone, the two older kids were gone, I just had the baby with me, and he went to sleep, so I said, you know what, I'm going to do something, so I got all those out, and while I was watching some YouTube videos, I put them out on the table and took pictures of them. Man, I've got to fill these holes in this driveway, it's horrible. But uh, actually, the engines, the two bags of engines, already sold. Those were, had I had offers on them this morning when I woke up, and man, I've got to fix this driveway bad, it is getting horrible out here. There's been so much traffic going in and out of here since I rented this place out. But anyway, those are sold. The uh, model car parts are still on there. I don't know if they'll still be on there by the time this video comes out or not, but you can always check my eBay. The link is in the description. But I want to get the gate opened up and get everybody started, get the loader going. That way everything's ready to go, and we'll see what we can get done today. This was the main reason why I came out here today. Well, actually, I should say that this is the original reason why I came out here today. This isn't the main reason anymore, but a guy's gonna be here pretty soon for this. I've got a guy out back getting some parts off of an old 48 or 49 Ford truck. And while he's back there, he's putting some tires on a half ton that I have back there that I've had for a while. And he's buying that whole truck for parts. I have to deliver that truck to him later today, most likely. And then on top of that, the guy's gonna be here at some point in time to get the old grain truck, the one that runs and drives. I really wanted to keep this truck I had big plans for this truck, but you know what? At the end of the day, cash talks, and he had money in his hand. I made about a thousand dollars profit in less than 24 hours, so I really couldn't turn that down. And it's not my favorite truck in the world. I really do like it, but I'd rather fix a, a Dodge or something like that. But as people get here, I'll film loading them up, whatever else I'm doing. I've got some other things I got to take care of too, so probably gonna stop talking at this point in time because it is cold and windy, and I'm sure the audio is pretty well garbage. I'm going to set the camera up and start filming whatever I've got going on.
there he goes he's got four straps on it he's only going 30 miles and he's going to go 30 miles an hour i hope it makes it that's a tiny trailer for a big load that truck weighs about 2500 pounds i'm pretty sure those tires aren't rated for that but he's going to take it nice and slow so i think it'll be fine i actually sent a uh, a great big 57 or 58 chevy grain truck cab like that one time all the way to north or south carolina i forget which on a little jet ski trailer and it made it so i guess but it's paid for so it's his problem now <laughs> here's that half ton ford that i sold he came and put tires on it now but the uh, back passenger tire is locked up i'm thinking it's just the brakes because the driver's head turns so i want to see if i can get it broke free real quick with the loader and there's a trick to doing it that you can only do with a loader if it has tires on it and you can get to the tires which it's a perfect scenario for this one so i'll show it to you real quick Well, unfortunately, I think it's the rear end that's messed up because I had both of these wheels rolling. That one was going forwards. This one was going backwards. So I think that's the issue is that something in there is messed up. But he's got a truck at his place, so I'll, and I've got a tilt trailer, so we'll just drag it off. Won't be an issue. There's not a whole lot left on this truck. I did have a guy wanting to buy the uh, gearbox off of this and some pedals and whatnot, but I just haven't had time to pull those parts. And then this guy showed up wanting to buy the whole thing like it sits. So I guess that's what we're going to do. I've got more of those gearboxes and pedals and stuff on other trucks. So I can always pull those off of something different for them. And actually another guy was telling me those are the same on the big trucks as they are on the half tons. The gearbox and the pedals and all that. So he and he, that guy bought a set from me and he cut them out himself. So maybe that's true. I don't know. He brought a portable generator and he's cutting the seat out of that truck over there. Because the seat that's in this half ton is missing a bunch of brackets and parts off of it. So that over there has got good brackets. So he's going to pull it out and put the two together and make one. Well, I'm waiting on a guy to get here and he hasn't shown up yet. So it's about 12.30 now, I'm getting hungry. So I'm gonna head out and find me something to eat. I think the barbecue place is still closed. I don't know, I'm gonna drive by there. It's kinda of out of the way to get over there if they're guard closed, but hopefully they're open. If not, I'll run into town and get something else. Then I guess I'll come back out here. I'm supposed to have a guy come look at that car. I don't know if he's gonna show up or not. I had another guy just happened to be in town. He stopped by, looked around. He didn't buy much. He mainly just wanted to look at stuff, but uh, he bought a couple little things, a Volkswagen door and a couple of hubcaps. And then he looked at a few other cars and some mall art and that type of stuff. Said he'd let me know on that later. And then I had somebody interested in coming and buying one of these Buicks over here, but uh, I haven't heard from them. They said they wanted to come out this Saturday and get one. And we emailed back and forth several times and then I never heard back from them. So I don't know, I guess they decided they didn't want it. That's why I schedule everybody for one day. And that way if half of them don't show up, it doesn't cost me anything whereas if I cancel other plans and come out here to meet somebody one person and they don't show up I lose tons of money and time so don't want to do that but if everybody's supposed to be here at once it works out great I got the last box of converters in here they are ready to go there's eight boxes of them uh, I'm gonna go through I write down on the side of every box how many converters are in them I'm going to go through and add all those up and see what we got. There's actually a few more than I thought there were. Uh, looks like there's 856 regular converters. That's just normal converters. That's not aftermarkets and not wires, but I count everything else as a regular converter. Um, there's 62 aftermarkets and 38 wires. So that's kind of unusual. That came out to exactly 100 of the other stuff because the wires, they buy by the piece and the aftermarkets are worth a whole lot less. And if you count those in with your average, they'll really mess your average up. So I try to keep those separate. The reason why I keep these counted and kind of keep a rough track of what's here is because they send you a count as well and their count isn't usually the exact same. Like if a converter is broken up, they, uh, they count it as a half. They don't count it as a whole. Even if it's full, they count it as a half. But what they do then is they cut it in half, they process the material inside it, 
and then they pay you based on that. They don't pay you based on whether it's full or half or three quarter or whatever. They pay you based on what finally comes out of the converter. They actually process it, turn it into palladium, rhodium, and platinum, and they weigh each of those out and they pay you on that. So you get paid for exactly what you send, but just on the sheet they send you isn't always accurate on what they say you had in the boxes. So if I write down my own numbers, I'll be able to go by what they pay us and I'll be able to figure up exactly what these averaged. I have no clue what these are going to average. I mean, there's some junk stuff in here. There's some old stuff out of the 80s and early 90s that's like 30 and $40 a piece. But I've also got some of those big diesels. Where are they at? They're back here somewhere. Yeah, way back there behind me. You can't really see them on here. But uh, those are like 1000 or 1100 bucks a piece. So those are worth quite a bit of money. Now, before anybody says anything, and I know a lot of times in the past people have mentioned when I say something about, oh, I need the money to do this or do that, but I don't have it right now. And they're like, well, just sell a couple catalytic converters and boom, there's your money. These are not my catalytic converters. These belong to the business. I just work here and we had to pay for all these catalytic converters. So like those thousand dollar converters back there, I think I gave eight or 900 bucks a piece for those. So we're not making a thousand dollars. We're only making a hundred or 200. And then on top of that, it's not my money anyway. When I buy converters from people off the street, I really don't make that much money. Where we make most of the money is off the converters that we buy the whole car. But I do buy the ones off the street just because, I mean, it is 10, 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50 bucks a piece that we make. But I'm done messing with these. I'm going to go over and start cleaning out the back of my truck. I'm going to put some of that stuff on eBay that I bought at the swap meet. And then the rest of it, I'm just going to get unloaded into the box. That way I can worry about it later, get it out of my truck. They're supposed to be here in just a couple days to pick up those catalytic converters. And they'll just back the truck right in here. I'll load them up. And then I don't know if we'll uh, do another load anytime soon. Probably not this year. I haven't been buying that many lately just because prices have been dropping really bad on them. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but the ones I pull off of cars, I'll keep taking those and putting them in my secret location. Then maybe later in the year or next year, we'll see what prices do. We'll see what the economy does and we can sell another load then. I got to thinking before I can start taking that stuff out of my truck, I've got to make a place to put it. Now the stuff that's not on eBay, I'll just stash it wherever I can find a place to put it because I'm a hoarder and that's how I work. But the stuff that I do put on eBay, I try to keep very organized. That way I don't lose track of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out this little bit of stuff right here. There's not a whole lot there. And then I can find a shelf or something I can put right here. And I can put anything I put on eBay on that shelf. That way whenever something sells, I know exactly where it's at. There we go. Not much of a shelf, but it'll work. I can put a few things on the floor. And then I've got one, two, three shelves to work with. And if I can find something flat to put up on top, I can put more stuff on top of it. That's what I got. It came in the scrap, so that's what I put in here. Everything I had to move, except for the Studebaker Marine intake. I didn't list that yet because I want to clean that up and list that for the big money. But all of this stuff here, I just threw it on Facebook for cheap. Everybody says you should save that stuff and you should sell it. And Man, packaging this stuff is a nightmare. So I won't sell this stuff on eBay or something like that just because I do not want to ship it. So I try to sell it to other local people and for dirt cheap prices to where if they want to take the time to package it, they can and still make good money. But like that's a 289 Mustang exhaust manifolds and uh, intake manifold for a 65 Mustang or 66. And I advertise that for 100 bucks. That's dirt cheap. And then underneath it is a 1958 to 61 Chevy 283 four barrel intake. I put that on there for 40 bucks. And then that's an old AMC 327 intake, which is really cool. A lot of people, the smaller engines have two barrels on them. And so you can take that intake manifold and put it on some of the smaller engines and convert them over to four barrel. And then I have these really cool carnival sign pieces. I thought those would sell really good. I think I paid like 120, 130 bucks for all of these. And I threw them on there for 75 bucks for all three pieces. So hopefully somebody will come through and buy some of this stuff. I'll work on unloading my truck when I get back. But first off, right now, while I have a chance and there's nobody here, I'm going to load up the old Ford half ton out back, load it up on my trailer, chain it down, and take it and deliver it real quick. We are loaded up and headed that way. I loaded it towards the back of the trailer. It doesn't weigh nothing, so I'm not worried about throwing the, the balance off or anything like that. But without those wheels rolling very good on the back, I want it as close to the back as possible. That way he doesn't have very far to drag it. I'm going through categorizing stuff, taking pictures of some of it. The carburetors I'm not going to list now because I don't have a tape measure and everybody always wants to know the measurement here and they want to know the measurement across here. And since I don't have a tape measure, I can't measure that stuff. But I was just kind of looking them up and this one here, well, I guess before I say that, I paid $140 for all of these tractor carburetors and old, there's a few old truck carburetors here as well. 
but all the magnetos and these carburetors are right here I paid 140 for all those and this muffler and that gas pump right there that nozzle so that's what I gave for all of that this carburetor by itself uh, there's a bunch of them on there that are in the 200 250 range this in here is a little bit not quite as clean as those it's a little bit rough but it's still everything moves probably can get about 150 bucks for it so i get more than my money back out of just this one and that's actually the only thing i've looked up value on so far i haven't looked up the value of any of these other carburetors now these old w1s are usually worth about uh, depending on condition if everything moves or not between 20 and 50 dollars. i think everything moves on this one but unfortunately it is missing the little cover over here so that's probably about a 30 dollar carburetor there i kind of went through and looked some of these others up this is an old case carburetor i believe I'm pretty sure that's what that is. I'll have to double check later, but that's probably about a hundred bucks is what these usually sell for. Uh, this here, I looked it up, and in this condition, it's probably gonna bring about 75 bucks. Uh, I didn't look these up. This in here is probably worth about 30 bucks. This is probably worth about 25 bucks. Over here, this in here is probably worth about 40 bucks. It still turns pretty good. And I didn't even look up these other carburetors. There's still an old Zenith. It looks like another Farmall carburetor, and I'm not even sure what some of these others are off of. So when it's all said and done, there's a lot of money to be made there. $140 investment, you get all your money back on one carburetor. Everything else is free money. It just takes time, and unfortunately, I just don't have a whole lot of time. But when it's all said and done, if I just kind of sell a few pieces here and there on the side when I do have time, then it all adds up and it brings out quite a bit of money. But I'm just going to kind of go through the rest of this. I don't have a whole lot of time. Like I said, I'm not going to list any of the carburetors. I'm probably just going to go ahead and list all the magnetos is what I'm going to try to focus on getting listed. And maybe possibly some of the car and truck carburetors get those listed but i'm not going to list any of these tractor carburetors that i have to measure the back of my truck is finally cleaned out all the swap meat stuff is gone i need to get that grill out when i get back home and i'll show you what all i got put on e well it's not on ebay yet but i got pictures taken to put it on ebay i've got all these carburetors down here just a few here and the other ones up in here a couple more in there and i've got these magnetos this instrument cluster all these magnetos that are up here that old distributor this old receipt register is pretty cool i almost kept it but then i was like yeah you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and sell it this old bnm pro shifter and then this box of hubcaps got pictures taken of all that what i'll do now is i'll go home and i got one more guy on the way as soon as he gets here then i'm going to show him a car then after that i'll go home and i'll spend the evening listing all this stuff that sign is just too cool every time i see it it's pretty cool as soon as i get my junkyard cabin done i'm going to hang that up for sure Here's the stuff I did not list. I just put it down there in a pile. I kind of went through it a little bit and just kind of figured roughly what the stuff's going to be worth. Then I've got the old Mercury steering wheel. I've got the light that I'm probably going to go ahead and hang on to. Then I've got the 54 Chevy grill and the extra bullets down here. And then of course I've got the old muffler here. I have no clue what that's worth. I can't find anything like it online. So I'm assuming it's probably worth a little bit to the right person. Just got to find that person. I figured it up roughly. This is kind of figured on the low end just to be safe. There's probably about $700 worth of stuff there that I took pictures of. There's probably about $400 worth of stuff down there, counting these two valuable carburetors over here. These are the more valuable ones. That valve handle's uh, pretty valuable. The rest of those are kind of hit and miss. So I kind of figured about $400 there. I've got this old Mercury steering wheel. I found a couple that were similar to it, just not quite the same, but I'm guessing that's worth about 100 bucks in that condition with a few cracks. Then I've got the grill and all the grill parts over here. I'm guessing that's going to be worth around $500, give or take. And then I've got the old muffler here. I'm gonna, just going to say 50 bucks. So that's about 550 bucks. Plus, I've got all the model car stuff that's at home. And that stuff, I've already sold about, whew, how much did I sell? I sold $65 worth. That's what I got out of those engines. I gave $10 a bag, sold one for 30, one for 35. The uh, other parts are still listed. And I'm just assuming I'll probably get about 100 bucks for all that stuff. So altogether, that's about, uh, what is it, $18.50 altogether, roughly, give or take, maybe closer to $2,000. But a little under $2,000 is what I'll get. I gave $500 for everything, but that's including my really cool sign back there, that little lampshade that I have that I'm keeping, and some of those Hot Wheels that I have at home that I'm keeping. I have about, I think, $75 invested in all the stuff that I'm keeping. So if you knock that off of there, that's $425. Let's just say $450 and get 1850 that's $1,400 profit. It's probably gonna take me around 10 to 15 hours to get it all done. So once you subtract eBay fees and all that, it comes out to around 80 bucks an hour is what I'll make doing this. So if I could do this full time, that'd be pretty cool. There's a few valuable items in here that I got pretty cheap is the only reason I'm making that much money. Normally when I'm doing stuff, I don't make quite that much or anywhere close to that much. 
I still have to pay taxes out of that as well, so that'll drop it down a little bit further, but still that's a good, say, $50 an hour in my pocket. So I really need to get back into it. I just dread it, mainly because I don't have anywhere good to package the stuff at home, and I'm always busy, busy editing for YouTube. But I'm slowly but surely getting back into a rhythm of things, getting the system down, trying to figure everything out and figure out exactly what I'm doing. You guys may remember this car here. Uh, this came in for junk. I don't remember whew, about six months ago. Sat in here for a little while. He bought it for me, took it home, put a carburetor on it, runs and drives, and he's been driving it ever since. He drives it all over town. Pretty cool car, 68 uh, Plymouth. Fury 3. Cool old car. You just never know what's gonna come in for scrap. People scrap the craziest things sometimes. We did pay a little bit over scrap for it, but. My guy wasn't able to make it on the 59 dump truck. He got tied up. He already paid me a down payment. I mean, it's pretty well paid for. He's just got to pay the rest of the money and pick it up. Not too worried about it, but he got tied up at work. He couldn't make it, but the car over here did sell just now. He kind of went back and forth between this Barracuda and the 49, and he finally settled on the 49. I'm glad to see it go to a good home. I bought that almost exactly a year ago. The car has a lot of potential. It has a few issues, a little bit of rust down there, and the driver's floorboards rotted out a little bit. But other than that, it's pretty solid. It's all complete and original. Their front, uh, front wheels are in the trunk. Needs a little bit of glass in it, but you can buy all that new. So he's gonna do some work to it, fix it up. If he decides he doesn't want it after he gets it cleaned up a little bit, he'll just resell it, make a little money on it. If I had time to put wheels and tires on it, vacuum it out, wash it up, I could have got a lot more money, but I just don't have time for all that. And with that, I am done for the day. I've been working for about, how long, about 10 hours now? Actually a little over 10 hours, almost 11 hours now. And I'm pretty well exhausted. It's been a good day though, sent a lot of cool cars to their new homes, or that one's obviously not going to its new home, but it's sold and paid for and it will be going to a new home. Got a bunch taken care of, got a bunch of other stuff done, so it's just, it's just been a good day, been a good couple of days. I really enjoyed that swamp meet yesterday too, so I wish I could do this all the time, but Monday I gotta go back to the grind, I've got trucks to load next week, I've gotta crush some more cars, so I guess we'll go back to doing that for a little while. So it's one o'clock in the morning and I'm sitting here editing this video and it just stops at this point so i think what i did on accident is i bumped the record button and it just stopped recording so there was no ending to this video and i never realized it until just now but you guys know the drill if you enjoyed this one please give me a thumbs up i had a ton of fun making this video this is one of my favorite videos to actually make and as always i hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and remember to get out there and find an adventure we'll see you next time